Hi everybody, welcome back to another video on Feynman integration. Um, today we'll be evaluating this integral right here. That's the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural log of x plus 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. Um, first step is always create a function in terms of a new variable, in this case t, closely resembling the original integral. Um, and it'll be this right here, the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural log of tx plus 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. And the reason that is a function of t is because if you evaluate this thing with respect to x uh, from 0 to 1, all the x terms will be replaced with constants and you will be left with nothing but t's for, variable, for variables, which is why that is now a function of t. Um, so that allows us to take a derivative of that function of t with respect to t using the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign, which uh, I believe I, I went over in my very first video. So take a look at that if you want to see how that works. Basically, it just says that you can take the derivative with respect to t of this entire function right there um, by simply um, leaving it alone except taking a partial derivative with respect to t of the integrand. And that's what I did right there. This x squared plus 1 in the denominator comes from this, because when you take a derivative with respect to t of this thing, that x squared plus 1 is a constant. This tx plus 1 in the denominator comes from taking the natural log of tx plus 1 with respect to t. So you get 1 over this times the derivative with respect to t of the inside function, which is just x. So that's it. f prime of t is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x over tx plus 1 times x squared plus 1 dx. The next step is a lot of busy work that you probably don't want to see because that's not why you're here. It just involves a lot of partial fraction decomposition and algebra. Um, so this is what you get when you uh, perform those steps. Um, next step after that is to simply evaluate that integral. And you can see that, that, and that are pretty, pretty standard integrals that you would probably, you know, you would find those on, you know, a Calc 1 or Calc 2 class, depending on when you learn about natural logs and stuff like that. Um, but anyway, that's a, that's simply a uh, U substitution. Uh, where u is equal to x squared plus 1. This one is simply a trig substitution where x is equal to the tangent of u. And this one is another u substitution where u is equal to tx plus 1. Um, and then you evaluate that and you get to this part right here. Um, Right, because if you evaluate this first one and then multiply it by 1 over t squared plus 1, you get natural log 2 over 2 times t squared plus 1. If you evaluate this, you get pi t over 4 t squared plus 1. Um, and then you will have minus the natural log of t plus 1 over t squared plus 1. And of course, all those t squared plus 1s come from that. Um, so... Why don't you pause the video right now and see if you can figure out how I got to this step from this step. All right, did you figure it out? So what I did is I just integrated both sides of the equation from 0 to 1 with respect to t. I don't have room to put the dt there. So um, the reason why uh, this side changes to f of 1 minus f of 0, that's simply using the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2, I believe. Um, that states that uh, this integral will simply be the anti, this definite integral will simply be the antiderivative of the integrand evaluated at the bounds. In this case, that's f evaluated at 1 minus f evaluated at zero. Um, and we actually can easily figure out what that is. 
um, our function, don't forget our function of t evaluated at the point t is equal to one, would simply be this thing with a one inserted for the t. So um, if you put a one there, you'd simply get back our original integral. So f evaluated at one is simply i. Now, if you evaluate our function of t at the point zero, you will get zero because you'll end up with a natural log of one in the uh, in the numerator of that um, integrand, and therefore the whole thing would evaluate to zero. So you get zero, and then uh, you you end up with this stuff when you evaluate those integrals. And I won't bother. Um, I won't bother you know, doing those. Oh, well, this one's important. When you, when you integrate this, this natural log of t plus 1 over t squared plus 1 between 0 and 1 with respect to t, um, you actually end up with, um, that is exactly i, um, right? It's just with uh, t replaced instead of x, and you know that doesn't matter, right? Because if you evaluated this from 0 to 1, you'd have exactly this. So that's where this i comes from. And now to arrive at our final answer, it's, it's just a matter of adding these two together, then adding i to both sides of the equation, and then dividing by two. Um, and what you will get is that our original integral there, i, is equal to pi times the natural log of two all over eight. So uh, that's it. Hope you enjoyed that.